when it comes to Marvel Studios live action, we have heard from multiple script writers, show creators, directors, and producers that when you're working on a live action adaptation, restrictions come flying at you pretty rapidly once you start to veer out of the norm for what your character is connected to, especially when it comes to connecting to other franchises that are also happening at the same time. But in a recent interview with Marvel, Brad Winderbaum, the lead head on the animation side of the MCU, talks a little bit about the logistics and how much more freedom you have when it comes to animation. So just so we are clear, it's pretty much, I think, universally understood by now that if you're part of Marvel Studios Animation, you are a spin-off of the main universe and you are technically a what-if story. No matter which of the upcoming shows you are, whether you're Spider-Man, more what-if, the X-Men series, or whatever else they have in development, you are considered a what-if tale. You are not important to the main continuity of the main 616 live-action universe, but you're out there still spinning off of it. So that much is very clear. So Brad Vinderbaum was talking with Marvel about this approach, talking about how Marvel Studios live action is more restricted to what you can do. If you want to use a character like Spider-Man, you have to go through so many different loopholes to get to talking to someone in terms of why you should be able to use this character and then logically they come back and tell you, well, we have plants here, or this is here, and you can't do that. And he says when it comes to all that, it's very limiting on the live action side of things because there's so much conversation and you have to be careful with these characters and what you're doing. But then overseeing the animated side of things, you sit down and you have all these characters. You're not held back by anything because Marvel Studios owns all the characters in comics and animation. So you can do whatever you want, explore any story you want, any permutation of any event, you're free to do it. So he says that on the animation side of Marvel Studios, you have ultimate creative freedom. You don't almost have to ask anybody for anything and you're free to do whatever you want. But then you go back to live action and they're like, oh, yeah, that thing you mentioned there, yeah, that has to be a Chitari weapon because that's what we established in this part with the damage control in Spider-Man Homecoming. And that connects to item 47 and so forth. And you're like, oh, okay, let us just change this entire element. On animation, they can be like, oh yeah, mutants. And they're like, cool, go with it. No restriction. So it's interesting to see how live action is still very much micromanaged and everything has to be put through legal scrutiny. And on animation, they're like, whatever you want to do, do it. Go ahead, do it. We don't care. I wish the films were more like that, but it makes sense why they're not. 